Hello and welcome to the Spatial Structures Movers and Shakers interview series as we look ahead to the ISS Annual Symposium and Spatial Structures Conference organised by the University of Surrey and taking place virtually in August 2021. My name is Mark Richardson and today I'm joined by Romek Tarczewski, who is a Professor of Structural Engineering in the Faculty of Architecture at Roslaff University of Science and Technology. Romek holds a PhD and DSC in lightweight structures and has served as a structural consultant to many companies and architectural firms. Romek, thanks very much for joining us on the Movers and Shakers interview series. Okay. Hi, Mark. Thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure for me to be here with you. Well, it's a pleasure to get the chance to speak to you on our series. Um, we start by asking our guests about the period of lockdown. How has that been for you in Poland? Oh, it's a terrific time for everyone, I think, and it affected uh, everyone, I think, uh, people and, and the country. But for the country, economy goes slowly better and better, but many, many people were affected and some small companies were closed, but I hope that it's finished already and we are coming to normal life. But the, 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 the most, and I think, uh, long-lasting effect will be uh, the psychological effect of that. We, we were closed in our homes for several months, more than one year. For me, I, I, was, I was conducting uh, my lectures and, and classes from my home and was, it was really a problem. It was really challenging to move outside because I have classes in different hours and <laughs> uh, walking my dog was the only opportunity to just to get the fresh air. So. Yeah, thank you for sharing that answer, Romek. Um, some, some very uh, good points there. And uh, yeah, we're, we're all hopeful that uh, things will get back to normal soon. Um, we also ask our guests about their career paths and career journeys. Perhaps you could give us an overview of your own career journey to date. Okay, I'm a structural engineer and I graduated uh, Faculty of Structural Engineering in Wroclaw University of Science and Technology in 1984 long time ago and uh, after that i was working on construction site uh, I, I was supervising construction uh, construction sites and they, uh, then i moved to um, design companies uh, smaller and then bigger uh, i also spent some, some years there and in 1992 i joined the faculty of architecture starting from assistance uh, the position of assistant to the professor now <laughs> So that, that's, and uh, during my career, of course, I was uh, an active engineer. So in 1994, I established my uh, private consultancy company, uh, not company, uh, small, small, small enterprise practice. And I, I've been designing uh, actually everything, uh, dwelling houses, industrial buildings, general purpose buildings, even opera house. So, <laughs> okay, that's Brilliant. what I'm doing. Awesome, um, a very uh, diverse range of projects you've clearly been involved in there. And, and building on that, is there a research paper or project that you are currently working on? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, my recent uh, long lasting research, but, but uh, uh, some new, new uh, trees uh, we found uh, recently is uh, the one I'm working together with uh, Slade Jelen from Burder Buffalo and Roy Pauletti, who was also your guest here in this, in this series, Roy Pauletti from Sao Paulo. And we are working on, on the paper uh, concerning uh, uh, inflated cushions, uh, which I hope to present today. And uh, the new idea is to um, uh, apply a structure interlocking for, for construction uh, of uh, flat plates from inflated cushions. That's, that's, that's what we are working and I hope to present, this paper will be ready for presentation in conference and in journal in ICSI conference uh, next year. No, that's good. We, we've, we've heard about it and we're excited about that collaboration where we're looking forward to uh, to seeing more of it. That's great. Um, well, thanks for sharing that with us, uh, Romek. We're now going to move to the middle section of our interview, which is entitled Your Space, Your Structure. So at this point, I hand over the presentation to Romek, who will be presenting uh, for a period of time on a spatial structures topic of personal interest to him. So uh, over to you, Romek. Thank you, I'm sharing my screen. I will start a presentation of, of my work uh, 
from uh, inflated cushions. It's a topic I started to work in 1990s and the idea I'm still working on now with, with my colleagues from US and, and Brazil, uh, the idea of modular inflated structures. And uh, now they are called bending active because bending active became a common term for such type of, structure, of structures uh, which are formed by uh, large deformation which get the, the rigidity by a large deformation. But uh, when, I, when I started working on it, this term was not coined yet, and I call them self-erecting structures. So that's, that's, that, that name appears in my papers. The, the idea is to um, adjust uh, small inflated cushions and small elements uh, to any shape by, by connecting them and by using additional, additional elements like uh, like, for example, cables and cross braces, and uh, form the final shape, shape, shape by uh, pulling uh, uh, horizontal cable fixed to, to the um, supporting parts. That, that's the general idea. But there are many combinations possible to, uh, to be developed on this base. And uh, structure of uh, single cushion is also interesting because we can make just a single cushion. We can make a cushion with internal diaphragms and internal channels for supporting supporting air for the, for delivering air inside. And what is now very interesting for me, a cushions which I call semi-rigid cushions which have uh, one, one side uh, made of rigid panel. This can be plywood, this can be aluminum panel or anything, uh, because they form a surface which can be used, for example, for bridge, for, for floor, and so on. And the idea of uh, uh, topological interlocking is, is based on this type of cushions, because then we get uh, a rigid surface of the floor. And uh, also by changing rigidity of the structure it means that change it means that structural height of this uh, structure is variable bigger uh, in the center or smaller in the center by changing length of cross braces by changing uh, thickness of, of uh, cushions we can uh, receive uh, we, we can um, obtain different shapes shapes of the structure not only circular but also parabolic and, and other so this other option to form these structures. And we made some initial research, some, some tests, which confirmed the principles, but technology is still challenging and we must improve that. And uh, several papers uh, written by Slade Jelin and, and uh, me as a co-author uh, were published mostly on ISS conferences, where we were uh, developing um, theory for, for, for calculation of these uh, structures. And the other idea which can be applied uh, in uh, inflated cushions is to use them in rapid situations. For example, if we want to uh, deploy them very quickly, we can use something like cartridge, explosive cartridge, which can fill in, uh, interior with, with the gas, like, like in a car, uh, a security cushion. Uh, OK, this, these cushions can be applied for, for example, uh, for military bridges, floating bridges, when we have to, um, open, to deploy this bridge uh, very quickly, or also maybe in the future for space applications as shields for uh, spaceships uh, returning to, to Earth. Okay, I, I have a short uh, video prepared uh, two years ago for uh, for Boston Symposium, where all these ideas uh, are presented, and uh, I'd like to share this video with, with you. It's very short, just two minutes.
okay, that's it. <laughs> and that's all for uh, for uh, in, uh, a topic of inflated inflated uh, cushions, which is very interesting and and in, engages me engages me very strong. Uh, another another point of interest: uh, uh, natural prototypes of structural forms. I will not talk much about that because it's very popular and very common. The one th thing I want to put your attention is this this, this photo of uh, so-called desert rose. Uh, I, I put my attention uh, on that about two, 2005 or so on. But recently, I saw a new building design by Jean Nouvel, uh, National Museum of Qatar. Which is almost exactly the same in, the, of course, the different scale, but uh, natural inspiration is is very, very appealing. Okay, and from natural uh, natural prototypes of structural forms, I move to uh, topology of structural forms, and my habilitation was uh, on this uh, on this uh, uh, subject because I I was looking for some. Uh, Way, for a way to to transform flat patterns which uh, have some properties, some structural properties, uh, into three-dimensional structures, it's not easy task, and uh, uh, it's still uh, developing uh, area of uh, uh, research. And uh, I think I, I, I found some interesting solutions, especially for shaping um, planar uh, planar uh, meshes. Uh, quadrangular meshes over cartiers, especially for uh, glass domes and so on. Uh, uh, what, what was inspiring for me is this uh, solution uh, find by uh, uh, Michael Burt from, from Tecton Israel, uh, uh, a good friend uh, who, who find a periodic table of polyhedra and on the base of this table he can uh, uh, predict some properties, some structural properties of uh, structures based on on specific uh, figures, uh, planar and and three dimensional, and even in more uh, than three dimensions. It's it's very interesting and and very useful useful solutions. And then I was interested in the um, uh, aperiodic tilings of surface. Of course, uh, any one of you knows about uh, Penrose patterns there were famous, but probably less people knows about Amman patterns. Uh, Amman was an American mathematician who, who developed solution uh, different than those of uh, Penrose. And also have, this solution has some uh, specific properties of uh, duality with so-called Amman lines. Uh, and I I found a way to apply it in, in a structure, which I'll, I'm going to show on next slides, but before that, I will continue with topological issues and uh, what was uh, interesting for me and what I was working on is to reconstruct uh, planar meshes in, in three-dimensional uh, space. It's just a just few slides to show the general idea how this structure is lifted up from planar shape to, to three-dimensional space to cover, to cover uh, uh, structural mesh. And, okay. Uh, there is a building uh, of uh, the opera, new building for the opera. The, the old one is existing, it's, it's here. And extension of this building was, it was designed in 2010. But there are some, still some problems with, with uh, starting construction, but I hope this will go on. And what is so specific in this, in this design and why I'm talking about it is there's a, a very big Courtyard inside a cantilever part with length of 70 meters and 16 in, in opposite direction, and with a with a big glass glass roof inside. That's uh, you see this this glass roof and this cantilever part. And for the glass roof, I propose to to uh, apply aman bar with uh, as a one layer aman aman uh, tiling as a one layer, and aman lines as as another layer. So the uh, uh, spatial structures, the double layer grid was formed with, with interesting arrangement of bar, I, I hope. But the architects was, was not so convinced to that. And uh, finally, uh, my colleague architect uh, preferred this more traditional solution, unfortunately, but maybe I will apply it in, in other structure. Anyway, this building was very challenging uh, because of, of size and because of, of uh, these uh, big cantilevers. Okay, uh, 
Bending active is a very good idea, very interesting. And I'm trying to engage my students uh, in a workshop to build something on, on this base. And uh, just, just one example, uh, the task was in this workshop to design a freeform pavilion uh, made of slender strips of plywood. And of course, we had to use uh, geodesic lines on a given surface. And after several discussions and attempts uh, and, and uh, tests, uh, we, the students found uh, this, this structural version of the, of the pavilion with, made of strips of plywood. And then after calculations in, in Coramba, I think, uh, they started to work. It's just one minute report from this workshop without, without uh, sound uh, this time, but they um, constructed this pavilion in less than one day, in 10 hours from, from simple strips of, of plywood. It was, it was a very interesting experience because later they disassembled this pavilion and moved to campus of, of our faculty and uh, rebuilt it. And even this, uh, this plywood was uh, very slender. It was about uh, four millimeters thick. Uh, the, the structure as a whole was quite quite rigid and the students had good fun and I hope they learn a lot uh, about bending active and about uh, spatial rigidity of structures and about collaboration between architects and structure and engineers because actually it is the main interest of uh, my research and of my career interaction between architects and engineers and uh, finding a common language and finding a way to to collaborate uh, uh, together on a, on a given problem and uh, the continuation of my interest in, in topology was an attempt to uh, apply mutual trust construction in a real building this building was uh, installation uh, which was ordered by by city of Wrocław as a monument for uh, year 2000. Uh, however, it was built, uh, it ha had to be built uh, a bit later. So there are two towers, uh, 40 meter uh, height, each of them. And uh, because the idea was to put the glass panels and LED uh, screens behind to, to make some projections on these screens, uh, the structural system had to be very very elegant because because it would be visible. So I proposed to apply mutual trust in this building. Mutual trust solution is well known, and now we have some methods for simple creation of such meshes. And the structure of each tower it was a mutual trust uh, wrapped around the, the given shape. So we can simply identify these parts of of uh, structure as as two families of bars typical for for mutual structures and finally it was it was designed unfortunately after after we get a uh, building permit uh, city decided to not build these towers and it's not existing now unfortunately and uh, the last thing i want to talk about is uh, my collaboration with archaeologists it's quite a different piece of cake uh, I'm, I was invited by Polish Center of Mediterranean Archaeology, uh, who, who makes uh, ex uh, excavations in uh, uh, Egypt, Sudan, and the Middle East. And I was several times, and I'm still uh, try, uh, going to, to participate in these missions, especially in Sudan. Uh, the building on this photo is uh, one of the important buildings for Sudanese tradition. Uh, initially, it was uh, a throne hall for the kings of Makuria. Makuria kingdom was uh, south uh, south of Aswan. It was was, uh, was country, <clears throat> a very strong country in from fifth to twelfth century. And after after uh, the country became Muslim, it was used as as a, as a mosque. And now it's uh, it's actually object of culture. It's not used as a mosque. And we we do some works for preservation and. For this, this object will be <coughs> proposed uh, to be included in the list of uh, World, War, World Heritage uh, by UNESCO, by the way. And of course, uh, the, the difference in, in working uh, 
in such a, a place uh, comparing to, to other places in Europe and anyway, is that technology available is quite different and you must always fit your design and, and adjust your imagination to, to local technology and so on. So for example, you see that there this, it's, it's another building, uh, a church near this mosque, uh, where we had to design a cover over excavations. And these simple trusses, it was a challenge for local manufacturers, but uh, I'm very proud they, that they do, did that. And uh, I think they are proud too. In the nearest future, uh, this is the last slide, uh, and it's a drawing prepared by my colleague, uh, Ivan Shevchik, who designed architectural part, part of the project, is a um, cover of the large complex of uh, monastery uh, with uh, important paintings on walls. And the structure will be 40 by 40 meters and will be constructed there in Sudan. So uh, different uh, different treats in my uh, in my in my work. And I, I hope uh, it's not boring for you. Thank you. Romic, thanks very much for taking us through your presentation there. Um, a very diverse range of structural projects, new and old. Uh, really, really enjoyed seeing some of the things you're working on and yeah. then some of the uh, very interesting things you're doing with respect to uh, heritage there. So thank you very much for taking us through that. Um, we're now going to move to the final section of our interview, which looks to the future of spatial structures, um, and in particular, the 2021 conference. A key theme of the conference is inspiring the next generation. What advice would you offer, Romek, to aspiring engineers or architects looking to enter the field of spatial structures? When I was thinking about this question, I, I, I reminded uh, a small figure um, which I saw in a souvenir shop, probably in Norway, I don't remember, but it was a boy and girl sitting together and the description, happiness is being together. And that's my advice for young engineers. Uh, they should, not they, we should remember that we are specialists in one, uh, in one field, but uh, one field is not uh, enough to build a modern building. So we must remember that uh, many specialists work together over the buildings, in, especially in, in the field of structural engineering. And we must cooperate, we must work together. And if we find a common language, we are together and that's, ha that's happiness. And the other advice is, uh, is a, Latin uh, a Latin proverb, which I heard, uh, I think Mauro Giuliani uh, told it in one of conferences, uh, the minimis non curat preto, that's the Latin text. Uh, in the free translation, it means that only very bold people don't care about details. Uh, I think that structural engineers and architects should care about details. And if you look at, at Bauhaus and all modern uh, modern trends in architecture and structural design, which grow on this base, they grow they, they grow up, up actually on the base of uh, careful made details. So I think it's also a good uh, source of inspiration. Don't don't forget about details. Thank you, Bromek. Some uh, some very wise words there. Thanks for sharing that. Um, we also ask our guests uh, uh, the interview to about the challenges in the field of spatial structures. Uh, what do you think are some of the most pressing challenges in our field, um, particularly with, the, with respect to some of the, the current global challenges that we face? Because there are some challenges which are well defined uh, related to climate changes and uh, limited resources and and with uh, limitation of technology and for uh, and related to security, especially in an area uh, where earthquakes are an important factor. Uh, but I think there are also challenges uh, related to our mind, our as, as designers. Uh, we should uh, sometime remember about self-limitation. The building uh, is built for a specific uh, for a specific task for a specific reason. And it costs, uh, people spend uh, a lot of money for that and spend resources and uh, labor. And it's not only the place where we should manifest our personality. We should be very modest and, and uh, work very carefully and to look at the final aim in our science. That's a, a, a very good point and something we should uh, never lose track of in, uh, 
in the work that goes on in, in structural engineering and, and design in general. Um, Romit, we've reached the end of the interview, but thank you very much for taking the time to join us today. Really enjoyed your presentation. Uh, just a reminder for those watching the series, uh, registration for the 2021 conference is now open. Please head to the conference website for full details and information. And if you've enjoyed this video or indeed any in the Movers and Shakers interview series, please remember to like, share and comment. All of your views and thoughts are welcome. And with that, actually, a thank you to those who've been engaging with the series. Uh, our YouTube page has now reached 20,000 total views and has passed 450 subscribers, which is uh, uh, wonderful. So uh, thank you to our viewers for that. Um, but for now, Romic, we must say a big thank you for, for joining us today. Um, as, as very, much. very much enjoyed your presentation and your insight into the world of spatial structures from your perspective. Um, and as we move ever closer to the uh, the 2021 conference, um, hopefully we'll have the opportunity to catch up with you again. Sure. Yeah, I'm going. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation, Mark. It's my pleasure. And uh, I think that idea to prepare such a series of videos is, is a brilliant idea and it should be continued and for the symposia too. <laughs> well, we appreciate it, Romek, and um, no doubt get the chance to speak to you soon. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.